Hey guys, so Leash here today, and we are back with, once again, another video. And possibly the last one, like, ever, on Sonic Colors Ultimate. Yep, start celebrating people. Now, usually you'd want things to go out with a bang, in a good way, but for my Sonic Colors Ultimate news videos, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen, to be honest. Because of the news we've got today, and this is this. I don't even know what to say to this man, honestly. So, without any further ado... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into the news at hand. On to Twitter, we Sonic Rush. So here we have this user called Socky underscore 143 on Twitter, and let's just see what he has to say. I found some employee reviews related to Blind Squirrel and it's very interesting. Just overall higher up screwing over both the publisher and the developer team. And given games like Bioshock the Collection and Colors Ultimate, they started to connect in my eyes. So let's get on to reading these employer reviews. Right, so here's the first one. Pros. I would say the people I worked with, but they all smartly left the company. Now this is talking about Blind School Games here, not Sega. And also, this is recently. As in, Sonic Colors Ultimate recently. So this isn't giving me much hope, to be honest. And then, notice how that's the only pro. And let's get into the cons now. Extremely disorganized. Lie to clients constantly by the number of engineers working on a project. Underpay everyone. Dead in-house game that is five years too late. Management that doesn't understand different disciplines within programming. Unrealistic milestones. Management slash producers take whatever the beating the clients give them and they take it with a smile and pass off the stress to the teams to deal with. Too many producers. Now, just a word of warning here, not all this is going to relate to Sonic Colors Ultimate, just as the company as a whole, so, for example, things like Dead In-House Game that's 5 years too late, that obviously isn't related to Colors Ultimate since we know this game was in development since 2019. But even still, this is disgusting. Like, genuinely disgusting. Underpaying people. That is just truly just disgusting. There's no other word to put it. You have these hard-working developers and people working at your company and you're just not going to pay them properly. I mean, we don't exactly know why they underpaid them if it was just for, I don't know, lack of money during COVID or something. But even still, that's just terrible. And it just seems like they're just very disorganized. There's too many producers are not actually working on the games. This man. This seems like a very small team working at Blind Squirrel Games here. Sega, you really messed up here. Right, so here we have uh, the next uh, image here. No culture. All the good talents leave and management has a works with or without you attitude. Work-life balance is awful. Absolutely awful. Tons of OT, whatever that means, and stress the whole way. Then the CEO has the audacity to join a podcast talking about work-life balance. Do you not even know how your company is run? A bad thing for anyone who knows what's going on. I could go on and on and on, but I think my point has been made. If you're thinking about working here, just don't do it. There's much better opportunities elsewhere. What, what, what is this company? So we've been all thinking that Blind Squad is just incompetent, but no. It's the management that's been messed up here. Clearly there's lots of talented people working there, but it's the management by the people at the higher ups and stuff that are screwing over the development team. Hence things like Sonic Colors Ultimate and other things things that Brian Scott has produced. Advice to management. Your company will sink while you pretend like everything is okay. Good luck. Yeah, by the looks of things, yeah, that, that's probably gonna happen, let's be honest here. Brian Scott have messed up time and time again, like remaster-wise anyways. Now this next image is very interesting, so let's read. Cons, this is a different one by the way. Cons, massive amounts of money were funneled into IP for years. Draining resources from countless projects. I uh, don't think it's from Sonic because, once again, Blind Squirrel only worked in this game for one year. Maybe even less than that. Instead of doubling down on resources for projects that were already going on in the studio, attention was never focused, taking away the quality of the product. So many contracts were lost because upper management doesn't know the differences between disciplines inside all departments. And projects were dumped onto teams that were wildly unqualified to handle them. I.e. in most cases, Character artists cannot do environment art, and gameplay engineers don't have vast experience in graphics engineering. This directly resulted in layoffs. Communication back to publishers was a disaster. It was so bad that several projects either ended as a result 
or came out at a less than desirable quality. The bloated production department has since been called back, but its peak was so unreasonable in size and cost there should be no shock to anyone the layoffs occurred. I should know that I was not let go by the company. So communication is another thing that's been a problem with Blind Squirrel games, to the publishers especially, so that means no communication between Sega and Blind Squirrel during the development of this game. What the heck? Why? Why? How, why would you not? Why is that not a priority with this? This is so confusing, man. And stupid and everything else. And let's just move on to the next image here. Advice to management. Now that IP is funded, you no longer need to rob other billable projects of their staff. Consider all of the people that have been affected by years of mismanagement and poor decisions. Really hope the $5 million was worth it. Jesus. There are no bad teams. Only bad leaders. When you trash talk employees that you just laid off slash fired in an open forum, that information always makes it back to those people. Remember how small this industry is and how poorly that reflects on you as a leader. I left this company on good terms, but after hearing the landslide of poor decisions that I've followed, it's difficult to recommend this place to anyone. So it really seems like, like the people actually working on the game, they're fine, no problems there, but the higher-ups were deciding, like, making all the big decisions, like, who's working on the game, where they're working on the game. That seems to really be a problem here. And honestly, I can believe that, because Sonic Colors Ultimate, there's so much unused stuff in that game, like I was talking about in my last video, that really seems like the developers wanted to put their heart and soul into that game, but sadly, they couldn't because of mismanagement at the company. Like, what is going on here, man? Surely this company's gonna get shut down, like, Jesus Christ, man. This is terrible. Some of these statements are also mentioned more than once, like lack of communication toward publishers slash clients, and a lot of stuff regarding the higher-ups just not doing a good job with management or letting the dev team communicate with the publishers. Pros. Talented group of people and very dedicated crew. Pretty good studio, amenities, and snacks. Alright. Lots of freedom in terms of facility usage, i.e. after hours gaming, Great group of engineers and artists for porting and remastering work. IP is looking great. Cons. Putting the wrong people in charge to lead IP. Wasting money on the wrong things. Failing IP and not acknowledging the real issues. Putting on unnecessary pressure to dev team. Some teams are immune. Production throws people under the bus and the upper management would agree with it. When anyone from upper management talks to you, it's too late. There's no discussion. They don't believe everyone else but you. Advice to management. You are need for creating game demos as her IP. Let the voices be heard. You only listen to the wrong people. Not dedicate proper engineering team is greatly impacting the game. Design and upper management is a wall to advice. Old school design team that is failing. Have more oversight and be involved. Learn to walk before you run. By having so much and not enough talent to work on some AAA game is big gamble. I could have said AAA there, what am I doing? Some people may have great resumes, it doesn't mean they're good for the company. Confusing company goals doesn't reflect the realities. And I noticed a lot of the positive reviews are either weirdly vague, mention of not relating to making the game themselves like food or hours, and the negative go real... Well, probably... Yeah, I think I'll probably say really. In depth with what's happening. Yeah, why in God's name would you talk about the food and after hours gaming for the company? You're supposed to be talking about the development here. And from the looks of it, given how they are, it seems like Sega just gave them the IP or what they want them to do, Colors Remaster. Let them do whatever they want, given their stress-free nature and their portfolio and sites from my guess. But because they have just been using the time they were given by scrambling around without a proper plan, this caused teams to struggle, at least from what I'm seeing. To me it's kind of a bit... confusing? I'm not good at describing stuff. To see the developers higher ups doing, well, a bad job. Managing a team trying to do their job by giving them roles they weren't made for. And struggling to do their job as well as having the publishers who paid their money just to have their roles be slammed to their faces, not being able to help collaborate nor communicate. And because of that, they can't even see what the game is like until it's too late. So that means all this time we've been thinking that Sega should have delayed the game. Well, that is kind of true, they should have done that, but no. It basically seems like Sega didn't even have the opportunity to see what the game looked like before release. And then when it was like a, like a couple of months before the game released, 
and Sega saw the game like, what the hell? It we been we gave like one whole year to fix this game, and this is what you come up with? What are you guys doing? So it really seemed like Sega gave them enough time to do it. It's just that the management of that team and the way they were doing it was just all wrong. So this really seems like this was all Blind Squirrel's fault that was ultimate was such a mess. Not Sega's. I just don't know what to say anymore, man. I mean, this could kind of be a good in a way, because that means Sega aren't incompetent and it's just Blind Squirrel who are. I don't know, that might be a good thing. I mean, it kind of shows to be honest because, I mean, we have Sonic Wars Ultimate, a remaster by Sega, and it was, well, a mess. And then we have Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, a remake slash remaster, that was amazing. It really shows, doesn't it? So, does this basically mean that when it comes to remasters and remakes, Sega should just do it themselves? Honestly, I think that's probably a good mentality to be honest because, why give a game to some people who don't know what the original game was supposed to be like when you could just do it yourself? Let other developers make a brand new game, not remaster an old one. Because it shows that Sega, yeah, they know how to make a good remake with Super Monkey Ball and with Sonic Wars Ultimate, they gave it to some other random people who don't know what they're doing and it failed. Yeah. Anyways, that is wraps it for today's video. So it really seems like Blind Squirrel were the ones who messed Colors Ultimate up and not Sega. So what do you guys think of this news? Are you surprised by it? Or did you see this coming at some point? I don't know, let me know down below. <sighs> I love to see you guys' opinions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially that last one. Don't forget to become Unleashed by hitting the join button down below. And remember, it is not necessary. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.